Hallelujah. Uh, welcome to another episode of um, The Basics. Uh, today I'm with my bride, my wife, Angelique. And uh, she's just going to join us. Um, she's going to be here. And, uh, you know, uh, she's just going to share, sit here with us as we go through this scripture for today, this lesson for today. Amen. 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 So we've uh, been talking about the basics. Uh, we talked about this, you know, the foundation of the things about what every Christian needs to know. Okay. Uh, I'll try not to laugh. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the things that Christians need to know. Uh, we've talked about God. We've talked about the Word. We've talked about man and Satan. We've talked about the cross. We've talked about the blood. And now, right now, we're going to talk about resurrection. And I'm going to ask my wife to just pray for us as we talk. Welcome, my wife. Our Heavenly Father, we give you glory. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your grace, your love, your kindness. We thank you for every single person that uh, is watching. And we thank you for this opportunity. I've given my husband to share your word. And we pray that every single person that will hear this, that you bless them, that will speak to their hearts. Father, that this word will not just change their lives, Father, but will bring new and newness in them, Father, that it will change their heart, that you speak unto them. And Father, that it will just bring new revelation each and every single day to every single person. We give you glory and the honor in the mighty name of Jesus. We do pray and we believe. Amen. Amen. So this topic about the resurrection, this is where every the story um, and the center of what Christianity really means, it really, it's the anchor. Um, when, when we read in the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, let's look in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14 and 17. I'm just going to go straight into the scripture. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14. Uh, right there, it talks about uh, 14 to 17. Okay, 15, 14, and 17. And I'm going to let my wife read for us. 1 Corinthians 15, 14 uh, to 17. Go ahead. And if Christ has not been raised, then all of our preaching is useless. That's right. And your faith is useless. That's right. And we apostles would all be lying about God. That's right. But we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. Mm -hmm. But that can be true if there is no resurrection of the dead. Mm. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been risen. And if Christ has not been risen, then your faith is useless. Wow. And you are still guilty of your sins. Wow. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, our faith, the anchor of our faith is based on this word right here. Resurrection. Um... You know, the word resurrection, um, and I think sometimes we misunderstand it. Um, when, when you read the story about um, Lazarus, you know, Lazarus, uh, we know he was dead. For after three days, Jesus came and brought him back to life. When Jesus brought Lazarus back to life, that is not resurrection. And I think sometimes people uh, get it wrong. That is not resurrection. When Jesus brought the little girl uh, that was dead out up in, uh, to life and you know that was not resurrection because why because Lazarus died again um, resurrection is coming from death to life forever so when Lazarus came to life at that moment it was not forever it was temporarily it was a miracle God was trying to prove um, Jesus wanted to to show people the power of the kingdom of heaven so that was not a resurrection it was just bringing these people back to life for temporarily but the ultimate purpose for God is to give us life forever um, and I think um, having this knowledge it gives people a lot of hope um, you know so this is where people say Oh, you know, Christianity is a religion for poor people, for people who have no hope, for people who just want to believe that there's life after death and things like that. But the reality is this, that, um, that there's life after this. Um, and only those who believe in Jesus Christ will be resurrected. Mm -hmm. um, when Jesus... Matter of fact, let's talk about this story about, about Lazarus, um, which is in the book of John. Um... So when Jesus, they come and tell him about uh, Lazarus, you know, that Lazarus has has been dead. Um, and Jesus 
you know, the Bible says that Jesus wept. Um, he wept after he heard about, about Lazarus. But he didn't do nothing about it. He just stayed there until Lazarus died. And so when Jesus goes to the town where Lazarus has been buried, um, he meets the sister um, to Lazarus. And this is um, John chapter 11, verse 23. Um, um, he says this, Jesus says this. For, matter of fact, let's start verse, verse 20. He said, when Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary stayed in the house. Martha said, this is verse 21 to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. It's like, Jesus, you're here. what are you here for? I mean, it's too late. Lazarus is already dead. We told you a long time ago, hey, we told you that Jesus, hey, we told you that Lazarus is sick. We know you can heal the sick, but now he's dead. What can you do with the dead? See, the res Jesus bringing Lazarus back to life, it was a proof to us that Jesus has authority over death. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, Jesus here, he talks to Martha. He says, um, let's talk about verse 22. He said, but even now, even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Um, so, verse 23, Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. And then verse 24, Martha replied, yes, he will rise when everyone rises at the last day. So she's, she knows, can you believe this is, this is Martha said that everybody, she will, he will rise like when everybody rises again. So there's already a knowledge that there will be resurrected, resurrection of the dead. You know, for us, we come to, re to learn about the resurrection of the dead through Jesus Christ. But before Jesus walked this earth, it looks like the people of Israel, they already knew that there will be a one day, uh, the resurrection of the dead. Mm -hmm. When we read the story in the Bible about a brother who had a wife and the, first, the firstborn, he dies with, with, without a child with a wife. And, the, and then the second brother comes in and marries the wife. And then he dies in the same way. And then the third, the fourth. And they ask Jesus, in heaven, when we resurrect, whose wife will she belong to? So there was already a concept, an idea that people will rise again. But there was never any evidence of what that would look like. When you look in the Old Testament, there are people that God took without them dying. You know, one of them is Elijah. Elijah was taken up with a, with a fire, fiery horse. He just came whoo, up to heaven. And, and Enoch. And we don't understand any of those things. We don't know. Uh, please don't get me started there. Okay, God is God and he can do whatever he, he wants to do. But one thing I know that if Jesus doesn't come back today or during your lifetime, that you will face death. Death is something that nobody can escape. And a lot of times when people lose their family member, they lose a loved one, somebody that is the closest to them. They feel like God has let them down. But at the same time, when we go to the funeral, as we go to bury people, at some point, everybody reflects, everybody, a thought comes in their mind saying that, I am next. I will die. I will be buried. What's going to happen to me when I die? Why, what, is, what, what if God is real? What if I stayed in his presence? What if, what if, what if, what if? What if I might, when I die, is it going to be a painful death? Is it going to be, what kind of death is it going to be? You know, we, we, when, we, when we just think of death, we try to wrestle it. But you know, on our daily lives, we, don't, we forget it. We don't want to think about death. We never want to confront death. We don't want to anything to do with death so what we do is when we we're doing our daily lives we don't think about death and matter of fact i'm not trying to tell you to think about death every second but we somehow live life as if we will never die you know people are if especially young people young people are they you know they say leave me i'm young i'm young and wild so people young people they do crazy things i mean they will drive 100 miles an hour you know with alcohol drinking people will be playing around with guns and people playing with their lives for some reason especially young people because they feel like they will live longer they will live forever they will, but really this life is temporarily this life will not 
we will not live in this world forever. See, a lot of times, even people fighting war and conflict and all those stuff, uh, uh, tribal conflict, you know, when people are hating each other because of the skin color, because the language they speak, you know, it's as if they're fighting for a territory, as if they're gonna be, they're gonna reign in that territory forever. People are fighting for for, for temporarily things, but in the end of the day, they're all gonna die. We are all gonna die. We're gonna leave everything behind. We're not gonna go with anything. You know, we're not going to go with anything. And so when we think of that, we just have to really step back and, and, and recognize that, you know what? This is not our home. This is not home. This is not home. So, but why, why is it important with Jesus? So here in this story, verse 25, Jesus told her because she thought about the day that everybody was resurrected. But she didn't know that the person actually she's standing next to and talking to is the resurrection of the dead. He is the author. He is the firstborn of the resurrection. Then for verse 25, he says, Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. He says, verse 26, everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? So Jesus is saying that. Even if I was to be buried, even if I was to die, see, when I die, the people behind me will be crying, will be, you know, going crazy or for me or for, any, or for my wife or for anybody. We, I mean, it's hard to be separated in the physical because we've, we've built a relationship, we've, we've, we've known each other, you know, there's been, there's been some influences and all these things. But really, that separation is painful. But if I die in Christ, man... I probably, I, I, I don't want to come back. I've, I've had people who kind of give those uh, testimonies about, you know, being close to, you know, when they die and they see God and they don't want to come back because, of, you know, um, I don't know if that, that's true or not. Again, I'm standing with the word of God. The Bible talks about heaven and the way the Bible talks about heaven, I don't think I would want to come back, you know. I don't think anybody would want to come back, you know. But really, death is not a loss, Okay? Death is not a loss because it could be a loss here on earth, but it could be a gain in heaven. See, when we believe in Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, not only do we, do we, not only do we receive life after this life, but our life, our eternal life starts at that moment. When I believe in Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, I'm already, I'm already right there at that moment. I've received eternal life within me. So when I die, when I die, I'm just... Absent in the body, but present in the presence of God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So right there, verse 27, she says, Yes, Lord, I've always believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God, and the one who has come into the world from God. See, something had to happen for her to believe it. And so Jesus, to prove and to back up his statement, he had to go and say, Lazarus, Lazarus, come out, Lazarus. Lazarus, come out. The reason Jesus was doing that, it was because he wanted to prove that he has the power over death. See, death came to earth because of sin. But Jesus Christ came to overcome death so that by Christ dying on the cross and him resurrecting, coming from the death and, and, and rising up again, it shows that he, has, he is victorious. That death has no sting. Death has no power. I, as a Christian, we should not be afraid of death. You, as a Christian, we should not be afraid of death. When Paul, when Paul is writing his letters, he writes, he says, let me tell you, so that you don't, you're not like the people of this world. You, so you don't mourn like the people of this world. So you don't, you, I want you guys to understand more than the people of this world. That when, we're, when we die, it, for us as believers, we're just, we're just going... To, to join God in, in the heavenly places, plays the role. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Even Jesus himself was very clear when he was here on earth, uh, multiple times when he was hanging out with his disciples, you know, he would say, you know, um, there's going to be a day I'm going to die. They're going to put me on the cross. Um, but after three days, I'm going to rise again. And one of those examples in the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 17 to 19. But 
Over and over, Jesus would say these things to his disciples. But the disciples, it didn't make sense until it actually happened and passed. And so when they looked back, they are like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, um, actually, they're like, wait a minute. Jesus, Jesus was telling us about, about his death. He was telling us that he was going to rise back again. He was going to, he was telling us, um, you know, he was telling us all these stories. Actually, yeah, that was um, also in that John that we just read. Um, um, John chapter 12, verse, uh, verse 20. Um, as you go down, Jesus is predicting his death. Uh, in the book of Matthew that I just talked about, 28, actually that's different. It's talking about the day of a resurrection. So let's read it real quick. Um, my wife, I'm going to let my wife read it, verse 1, and, and keep going until I tell you to stop. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Wait, so, wait, wait, wait. This is the resurrection. No, that's okay. Okay. So Mary and who? Mary Magdalene and Mary went out to visit. Mary Magdalene and Mary, they went to visit. The tomb. The tomb. I mean, what do you expect when you're going to visit the tomb? What happens if you go to the grave? Now, the tomb, back in the day, that's where they put the dead. It's the same thing as the grave nowadays. Uh, but back in the day, the tomb was, it was like a piece of rock. Uh, it had a door, which was a rock on it. But inside was a body. So people will go in there and visit the body. And probably sometimes they'll put oil on it or something like that in order to preserve it so it doesn't decay quickly. Um, so these women, they're going to the tomb. They're expecting to see a body there. Okay. Um, now, if they were with Jesus, you know, these women though, together with the disciples, they were with Jesus all this time. Jesus was telling them, I'm going to die, but I'm going to raise again. Mm -hmm. So why are you going to the tomb when Jesus already told you that he's going to rise again? Why? Because they never got it. When Jesus told them that he is going to rise again, see, they never get this point. They never got this point that Jesus is going to rise again. But guess what? Go ahead. Keep reading. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. Mm. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, That's right. rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. Mm. His face shone light, like lightning, mm. and his clothing was as white as snow. Mm. The gods shook with fear when they saw him, and right. they fell into a dead now, faint. Now, the guards, listen, the guards, they shook and they fainted because of the angels there. The, when Jesus died... The, the, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, they told the, 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 the emperor, the governor, hey, we want you to put army, we want you to put military at the grave because they're saying, that, you know, there's a possibility that these disciples, they're going to steal Jesus' body and they, they're going to claim that Jesus was resurrected. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to make up some fake stories. So we want you to put guards on the, on the, on, at, the, at the grave so, so that they don't make up this story. Matter of fact, there's even people that still believe that Jesus did not rise from the dead. There's people who think that when Jesus was on the cross, he didn't die completely. They took him off the cross before he was dead and they put him in the grave and then he was not really dead. And then his disciples took him out. Listen, my brothers and sisters, when Jesus hung on that cross and bled and, and was tortured, he's, he he lost his heart, and, and before he lost his heart, he said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, saying, Lord God, wh why have you forsaken me? And as, as, as he breathed his last, the Bible said, his soul broke just like that. And as soon as that happened, you know, he, he, they, they had to take a spear and, and, and to see really if he's dead. Usually when you take a nail or anything sharp, uh, you put upon somebody who is... Um, even somebody who's in a coma, uh, usually you want to see, to see if there's certain brain activities that will use a sharp thing. So they'll put a sharp thing to see if there's any 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 um, any reaction. Sometimes uh, when you step on a nail, you know you'll be like, Ow! you know you'll scream. Uh, and so even if you're, you 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 might be in a coma or you might be if there's a brain activity, there's some 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 reaction that your your body will do just to react to the, um, to the sharp object. So the same thing, they take a spear to see if there's going to be a reaction on the body. So they take a spear and they pierce 
on the side of Jesus to see if he's still alive or not. And when they did that, they didn't get any reaction at all. So they realized that this guy is completely dead. Mm -hmm. So when they found out he's dead, one person named Joseph is a rich guy, takes his body and takes it to his, um, his grave or tomb. So go ahead. So the, the guards are down because what? Because G, the, holy, the, 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 the angels is there, huh? Then the angel spoke to the woman. Mm. Don't be afraid, he said. I know, I know you're looking for Jesus, who was, re, who was crucified. Wait, 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 wait. So listen, we blame women for sin entering the world. And um, yeah, people usually blame the women. For some reason, they blame the women. But really, it's not the woman's fault. It's all of our fault. Man and woman, we all sinned. We all sinned. Look at the women. I mean, it was a woman that gave birth to Jesus. It was the women that first found out that Jesus was alive and he was not dead. It was, I mean, when you look at the power and the, the women in the Bible, I mean, it's overwhelming how God used women in his ministry. So anyways, yeah, you can do the dance. <laughs> but anyways, keep going, keep going, keep going. <clears throat> he isn't there. He mm. is risen from the dead. Just as he said, as he said would happen. Come see where his body was lying. And now, go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And he's, he's going ahead of you to Galilee. Amen. That's it. That's it. Amen. That's all. So listen, um, there's no gospel without resurrection. Just like we started, if Jesus Christ did not resurrect from the dead, then our faith is in vain. Then we're still sinners. Um, then we are losing and wasting our time. The resurrection of Christ is is the center is the essential part of of the gospel. There's no point of me going to preach to people and say there's this person that came and died on the cross uh, for our sins. You don't end there. Then what? Then he rose again from the grave. Mm -hmm. He is he ascended up to heaven. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Mm -hmm. And he's pleading for us and yes. praying to God for us. And as he was ascended, the Bible said that he sent out the Holy Spirit to his people. Mm -hmm. Listen, my brothers and sisters, that we who are believers in Christ, that we have hope. That this life we live is only for a moment. Mm -hmm. That even if we die, that we still have life and we will live forever. That eternity waits for us. Where we will be with the Father. Jesus says that I'm going to prepare a place for you. If I didn't go, if I if, if there was not enough room, I'd have already told you. Uh, there's enough room, there's plenty of room. Jesus resurrecting him, defeating death, it gives us hope. So listen, a lot of times when we go into the funerals for people, it's very dangerous to say that this person is in a good place, this person is in a happy place, this person is in heaven. Hey, listen. If, if somebody, if somebody we knew he was not saved, mm -hmm. if it's somebody that was not a believer, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what we say about them, that they were they're in heaven and a good place. Man, listen, if <laughs> whatever we say doesn't mean that it's going to take them to heaven. Mm -hmm. eh? You have to make your life right with God right now. Mm -hmm. See, even sometimes people might appear to be good people and we might be at the funeral saying this person is in heaven. But we don't know that they had secrets and they were living in darkness and they were just trying to be superficial. Mm -hmm. Really, in the end of it all, God is the one who knows the heart of people. See, you you need to you need to examine your heart. The people who've gone before you, you can't say, oh man, I'm going to see you. We're going to see each other. I'm going to meet you someday. No, 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 no. The only way you're going to say, you can, you can say, I can't, I'm going to meet you. And when you, your life is not, does not reflect the gospel. See, when, when we, when we are baptized in the water, you know, it's a, re, it's a resemblance of, of death and the resurrection. You have to die to your sin and come back with Christ. Resurrection means that we are risen with Christ. Yeah, go ahead, honey, if you have something to say about this topic real quick, about resurrection. Um, I think the most powerful thing that comes with the resurrections is the newness that come, that we see with, with Christ, is that once we die, we die to sin, we die to ourselves, we die to our selfishness, our selfishness we die to our... To, uh, um, we die to so much and what brings 
what brings the newness to the resurrection is the newness that we get with Christ. And um, there is power in resurrection and we wouldn't be here if Christ didn't resurrect, if, the, if, if Christ didn't die and come back again, there would not be meaning to salvation. But we come boldly in the, in, in, in the presence of the Father every day. We declare our salvation. We declare who we are before Christ because he died and he overcame death. He overcame the power of death. So we can gladly come to Christ. We can gladly live each single day very happy no matter what we face, knowing that wherever we end up at, we can always we will always resurrect one day and we'll meet Christ at the right hand of the Father and we'll live forever worshiping with Him. Amen. You know, and that's the message of hope. You know, uh, people are killing themselves because they don't know anything about their life. They're scared. They're terrified. But there's no need to be afraid. There's no need to be terrified. The Bible says, why fear men who can only destroy the body? Mm -hmm. Fear God mm -hmm. who can destroy both soul and oh, the yes. body. Oh, See, yes. men can only destroy the body, but guess what? You'd kill me, I'm still going to be alive. I'm still going to be with God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. See, there's people who are killing each other for envy, for jealousy. But guess what? Listen, man. Um, no matter what you do, I'm going to live forever. Yeah. 